carry on. My name is Beverly Sanders, and today is Wednesday, November 9th, 2016. I'm visiting with Ann Carlson at McFarland United Methodist Church in Norman, Oklahoma. Joe Sanders will be assisting with the recording equipment and sometimes adding a question of his own. This interview is for the historical records of McFarland United Methodist Church, as well as the Voices of Oklahoma United Methodism project of the Oklahoma Conference Oral History Research Program. This research program is coordinated through the Commission on Archives and History with the support of the Oklahoma United Methodist Historical Society. Well, Anne, we certainly do appreciate your taking time to come and be with us today and share a little bit of your, your history and your information about McFarland with us. Why don't you just start by introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about where you were born, where you came from, your education, your family, just kind of it, things in general. Great. I'm glad to be here. Um, well, my name is Ann Carlson, and I was born in San Diego, California. Uh, my parents were both native San Diegans, so San Diego is definitely home up until we uh, ended up in Norman. Uh, I have a brother and a sister, and um, I graduated from San Diego State University with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing. I always thought that I was going to uh, have a big career, and <laughs> yeah, I was going to be a buyer. That was my, my big dream. That didn't happen. I met Ed Carlson in college, and I married him before I graduated, and he really did not uh, want me working, so I <laughs> only worked for a little while. And then I was a wife, and that was in 1959. Mm -hmm. 1959. 1959, I was married. We were married for 56 mm -hmm. years, and he did pass away this year. So, um, how did I get to to Norman, let's Oklahoma? Well, let's see. Let's let's go <laughs> one more. Your your children and grandchildren. I have three uh, sons and seven grandchildren. Three sons and seven grandchildren. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, my, my brother was at a reunion one time, and they said, and can you name all of them? He, he had 27. Oh, my gosh. And they said, can you name all of them? And he I, stood there and named them all. But I'm not going to ask you to name them. Well, I could. But you <laughs> okay. know, in fact, two of them go are, are members here at McFarland. Wonderful. Uh, Dylan and Lauren Carlson. Uh -huh. David and Christy Carlson are members here. Uh -huh. And then my other sons, Andrew and Gretchen, uh, also and their family live here in in uh, Norman, but they are not members here. And my son John and his wife Dawn and their three children uh, attend church, and they live in McGregor, Texas, mm -hmm. and they're teachers at Baylor, and awesome. they attend church there. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, your your family uh, in San Diego. Do they? St are your other your my sister and, and brother and, and still brother still live in San Diego. Wonderful. Everybody still lives in San Diego. Uh, so do me. you go out there to visit? I do, and I just was there last week. I see. Okay. Yeah. I bet that was great. It was great. Yes. So now tell us about how and when you got to Norman and and how you wound up here. Well, I got to Norman because of business, and we were living in Belgium at the time and my husband's business brought us here. I see. And that's how I ended up here. At the time, I was really not a practicing Christian. I uh, had been raised in a Christian, uh, pseudo-Christian home, but with no religious training. Uh, I was baptized in the Episcopal Church and married in the Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. but I had no relationship with Jesus, and mm -hmm. I didn't, I knew, no, I had no, no, no Bible study background at all. So when I came here, I, uh, I, I shared this once at a, at, a, at a church dinner that I really felt like God had, uh, I think it's that, I, now I don't want to say the wrong thing, it's either Hosea or Amos, where God removes a person to, uh, to some place. Uh, mm -hmm. The door of hope, that's where you, he brings you into a place where you kind of are separated from everything that you, um, all of your friends and the lifestyle that you have known before. Mm -hmm. And that he just brought me here. And I started doing Bible study and mm -hmm. became a believer. And that's how I got to McFarland. I see. As a new believer. So uh, when, how did, when did you make the transition from Episcopal to, to Methodist? When I came here. When you came here. Uh -huh. And was there anything in particular that 
that brought Ed's them that mother, far a, uh, my mother-in-law was a Methodist, and so I she see, really okay. wanted us to come to the Methodist mm -hmm. Church, mm -hmm. and so we did. I and see. I immediately liked McFarland. And we joined immediately, we joined the adult Bible study class, ah, yes. which was taught by Buck Weaver. Oh, yes. And you remember Buck? At, th at that time called Buck Weaver's class. <laughs> yeah. So we were there for a good many years and made, you know, some great friends. And then we, we moved on with Chuck and Nancy Divin and we started another class called the Promised Land class, mm -hmm. which is still functioning here at McFarland. What, uh, what was you, Promised Land? was that and what minister? A bigger part. What year was that? What minister when you first came? That was, oh, Phil Fan. Phil Fan. Mm -hmm. and, and that would have been about? I believe that we joined the church in 1986. 86. Yes, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. That was just before we got into the building program. Yes, I know. I got, I know. I was, I, I, I joined at exactly the right time. I really did. And I was just so enthusiastic. I think a new believer is, a, is, is especially if you're in the right age, I was. I was in my 40s, and I, it was just a perfect uh, fit, you know, mm -hmm. so. So just while we're talking about ministers, uh, tell us about the, the other ministers that have been during your time at McFarland. Uh. Well, everybody since, you know, Dick House, obviously, Cale Brannan. Um, any that particularly stand out in your mind? Uh, any particular incidents or things that uh, well, Phil, memorable of course, things about any of Phil them? Phil is really the one that I really was always closest to because he was the person who really asked me to take on the big leadership roles that I did. It was it was Phil. Mm -hmm. First it was Kathy Mash, and then it was Phil. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, he was the one I had the re you know the relationship with, and uh, yeah. Yeah, felt like have, I was working for him a lot of the times. <laughs> yeah, we've come in many times that when, when either Phil or Kathy Mash, either one asked you to do something, you'd work, no turning say, down. There was no. It was it was amazing. Uh -huh. They were like the you know the dynamic duo. And, they were. and you knew that was just exactly what you wanted to do and needed to do. Yes, exactly. Okay, so let's go on from there to what activities did you first become involved in? You told us about the Sunday school class. I became involved in masks first. Well, actually, the masks. first thing that masks. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize you were in the masks. I, oh, yes. That's how I knew Judy. Oh, okay. Yeah. What I wanted to share with you, and I even wrote this down, uh -huh. was my, one of the first things I did when I came here looking for a place to, to be, because I, I wasn't involved yet except in a Sunday school class. I joined a little prayer group that met at the Altars Gate House. Okay. And Phyllis St. John, uh, Lorraine Raper, and Panthea, was it Freeman? Panthea yeah. Freeman, yes. Yes, and Kathy Mash and me. <clears throat> and we met wow. there once a week, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and we, uh, we studied, <clears throat> we had books that we would study. <clears throat> now I'm gonna lose my voice. We had books that we would study and then we prayed and we would sit in silence and pray. Hmm. And that was it, was, it was really great. Some of those times I remember what we studied mm -hmm. and I remember, mm -hmm. but anyway, I prayed for the church. That mm -hmm. was, um, I didn't know that that even existed. Now, I know. When was that? That would be right at the very beginning, probably so 1986, 1987. The, the, Kathy the probably would remember that too, and Lorraine, Lorraine may uh, remember it. Yeah. You know Lorraine has moved. No. So she's gone to Texas with her, uh, I think it's Plano, Texas, with her daughter. Okay. Yeah, they, she closed up her house and sold it. So that, that's all. That's not yeah. part, really part of this interview. but Right. Uh, no, I did not know yeah. that. So, uh, But anyway, that was my first... And then, uh, so I did that. I did my, I did the Sunday school, and then masks. And really, masks was just fun. I had a great time. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, what I parts did you have? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I played Queen Esther. Oh, okay. do you remember that one that we did? The one outside. Where yes. They, you played the different characters. Yes. Judy was uh, was she Noah's Noah's wife or somebody's wife? Yeah. yeah. Any, I I I just remember that whole thing because we would have to practice out there, and I am very susceptible to mosquito bites. Oh. oh. And I would be eaten alive by mosquitoes. Remember, it was all grass out there, and we would have these canisters of bug repellent and stuff. But yes, I remember that. And the funny oh, thing, wow. George Martin, oh. he was in the masks. Uh -huh. He was a doll. George Martin standing at the window 
of what used to be the back of the church overlooking what was the big going to be our stage which was kind of like a was it a big truck back of a truck or something, something as I like recall that. Some and that they parked back it was a platform back there yeah, and they had fixed up some kind of sheets or bedspreads or something yeah. to, to so I don't even know why we parts. were doing that but anyway it was he said Ann come here a minute and so I went over and he said look down and I looked down and he had written his lines <laughs> on, <laughs> on the bottom of it <laughs> On the bottom? I, of the bottom. He had written it chalked in his lines on the on the platform, on the wood. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I guess you know oh, my. I don't know. He was that was that was one of the funny memories I have about him. I was in that big uh, the Christmas Carol with Mike Nicholson. Oh yes. I was the spirit of Christmas past. Oh, with sure, the, I remember with that. The candlelights uh -huh. on my head and yeah. Wow, I remember that. <laughs> the, re the only reason I remember is because we just finished having a bunch of those re Re, uh, you know, done from taken from VHS to DVDs, and so we yeah. watched all of them <laughs> to, to, before we did that. So they're all fresh in my mind. Oh, good. Was I any good? <laughs> oh, you were very. <laughs> uh, let me see. What else would you? I see. I would just ask about what it activities did. You've already told us about your Sunday school class. So let's let's come to committees then. I know that, and let me say this. I I admire so much that you were one of the pioneers here at McFarland of women in leadership in the lay activities. Uh, I, up until then, I really don't remember seeing much, many of the women actually chairing committees, on the committees and on education maybe, but most of the other things they didn't do. So uh, with that in mind, let's tell us about your committees. You told us, had you already told us that or was that I told you about, well, it's not, I became, I like stewardship, and then when when Don McGorman retired, I became chair of that. And I think we, you and I, were involved with a lot on that committee. That was beginnings. We, I was trying to think back. We mm -hmm. started the blood drive. Yes. We started. We did the first when you were on the committee. We did the first of the church directories. Mm -hmm. Do you That's remember right. that? I do. I that do. was the stewardship did that, and that was such a big thing uh, for our committee. And one of the things we did was <laughs> redefine what this stewardship committee was about, that it wasn't about yes. your money. This stewardship was about the stewardship of your time and your talents. And it wasn't about planting trees either. <laughs> about planting trees. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that one, explain that one. I well, we did that. Remember that we, oh, what did, it wasn't when I was chair, but we had a, um, do you remember the Bradford pear? I remember buying a Bradford pear. That was when Don hmm. McGorman was chairman. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah stewardship of the earth. Oh, okay. That was mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. That Bradford pear is, uh, died. <laughs> okay, so you were on stewardship committee, and then you became chair when Don retired from that. I did. And from there, you went to. From there, I I believe my next thing was be. I mean, I may be missing. Ed and I did a lot in here, as as certainly as couples. We were the right. Sunday treasurers for years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I and got involved. You've already with mentioned the, that you and Ed started a Sunday school class together. We started Chuck Divin, Chuck and Nancy Divin, and Ed and I started the Promised Land class. There were the four of us and Noble Divin, their son, and we met in the Altars Gate House, and okay. it just grew. Then, mm -hmm. then I was asked later on by Kathy if I would please start another Sunday school class, which I am still in, okay. called the gift class. That was, we came up with a name, Mother Class and I, Growing in Faith Together, that's the class I'm in now. Uh, it was supposed to be young adults, they're not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? It does. So that's actually my Sunday school background. Mm -hmm. But I think my next thing, I think the next thing I did was probably program chair. Program council? Uh, pro pro program council chair. I okay. think I went from stewardship chair to that, where mm -hmm. I got a really good feeling for exactly what is going on in this church at that time. Why don't you explain I what knew. program council was? Well, we don't have, we don't it, have anymore, it anymore, now. do we? No, we and don't. We meet in a room about as big as this, and, and it, was a, it was the chair. It was all of, it was the chairman of all the different committees in the church. It was a large group. And we met once a month, and we would have a dinner, and then we would, they would report, they would get up and report it, what was going on that month in their, in their uh, world, what they were, you know, worship would, you know, Perry 
and Russell Mathis would talk about what the worship, what the songs were going to be, and what, and then it, 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 we'd have the, we just everybody got up. Paul, Polly Sandlin would get, you know. Polly would talk about Polly the would, singers. I mean, we'd, yes, we had everybody, and I would go around, and then we would, you know, that was what we did. So we knew exactly what was, and we try to plan the church calendar. We would have white, we'd have um, uh, butcher block. Well, we had paper on the wall. We would go around so that we didn't, you know, have any kind of overlapping functions. That was helpful. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> so that was the program council. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else? You went to the you, program you council. Did, yes, uh, program council, and of course had the education and uh, we had uh, education. We the had children's, the children's ministry. Children's ministry. We had the library. We mm -hmm. had we just mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can't try yeah, to. Yeah, and think uh, I'm not sure exactly when it disappeared. I don't it, know. Uh, it it uh, filled it did. A, filled an important purpose. But I did it twice. I mm -hmm. didn't. I did program council chair. Then I became the lay leader. Yeah. Talk about lay leader. Well, lay leader is basically the understudy for the board chair. And um, so you spend a year uh, kind of uh, going to all the meetings that uh, he didn't want to go to <laughs> or he couldn't go to or going with him, you know, uh -huh. at that time. And I'm. Um, you remember who was? I, I'm trying to think, and yes, I do know, and I and I, but it's it's, it's just it's just my. It wasn't it's, Don McGorman. No, it was not Don McGorman. No, 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 and I and it, it'll come to me in a minute. Oh, who it well, was. That's okay. Go ahead and talk it's about a great the other guy. stuff, maybe. But anyway, we um, it was a, it was a year just being. Yes, you know, sometimes you'd be asked to speak because you were the lay leader. I know that I got my picture taken a few times. <laughs> I, I got my picture taken because we were when we broke ground out here for the new building, I was in there as a lay leader with my shovel. <laughs> um, I got I didn't to, realize that. Yeah, no. uh, you'll find that picture somewhere. I mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got to, you know, meet the bishop. At that time that was Bruce Oh help me. And I can't think of his oh, name either. You know what I who I, I know who mean. Mean. Really, really tall. What? Really, really tall. No, no, no. Well, that was, was before. Right? That was before. That was before. He he was the he was the bishop that came and dedicated the building, where it was Phil and I and the bishop and we were up there on the, on the podium, oh. overlooking Fan Hall oh, on a up like this and there was no railing there and I stepped up on it and Phil said to me, I will never forgive you if you fall off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I my. did not fall off. <laughs> okay. But, and so then you, board chair. Then the next year I became board chair. And that board chair, okay, what, what, what would you say like is be, board chair? What, would you, what was it like being board chair? Board chair is, is much less structured than program council chair. And, really? Well, yes, because you just have a lot of people coming and um, you have to plan your agenda. Of course, a program council chair is fairly you know what the agenda is going to mm -hmm. be, unless there's some big thing coming up. Yeah. But pro, uh, administrative board, that was something that I had to work very closely with Phil with. He would tell me what we need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I had a secretary who would take all the notes for me. Um, and I Do you should, know about when this was, that you were became board chair? It would be in the 1990s, and no, I don't. But. They all have That's a that pretty quick that, progression in coming in 86 in. and being the yeah. administrative board chair I in moved, the early 90s. Yeah, sometime in the 90s. 90s. It may have been later. It may have been later. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared to answer that question. Uh -huh. Well, that, that's okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to hold you to the exact dates. Um, okay, uh, did you have, did you, I think I'm, I've heard the administrative board chairs or people that do all these other things saying that that they somewhere along the way have to visit all of the other committees. The administrative to kind of know what's board chair with their goes body. to when I was the administrative board chair, we were required, we did, and I'm sure they still do, to attend every every single meeting of every single committee. You 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 needed to know what was going on. So I went to I went everywhere. I went to um, you know the foundation meeting, even though I wasn't on the foundation, <laughs> mm -hmm. Ed was, but I wasn't. I, I went to, uh, to well, just at every meeting. Mm -hmm. So I was busy all the time. Was the foundation uh, formed while you were 
Foundation Ed, Ed was a founding member of the McFarland Foundation, okay. and that was another Phil thing. Uh -huh. Yes, it was, and we were very active in the foundation. Uh -huh. Yes, you Ed know about was. When that was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right, Beverly. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Well, we could go back and find out when the well, foundation. That's okay. He was a founding member, along with John Izzard. John mm -hmm. Izzard was the first president, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that was a Phil, a Phil idea. And that was a, a great. Foundation was a great idea, and we used to have the, Merrill Dean. Was it? Wasn't he on? Merrill the, Dean was. The he, I don't know that he was an original Maybe board member. I'm not on. positive whether he was, but yes, he was on the. Yes, he absolutely was on the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, it was Dr. McCullough too, didn't you? Dr. McCullough. Yeah, oh, he was. Yes, Gerald McCullough. I'm not sure if he was an original member, but he was a long time board member, and he, and Ed and he Ed just loved him. And they used to have a great time working together. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yes. Dr. McCullough, at every one of our foundation dinners, would have a little poem that he would say at the end. It was amazing. He would make up something about the year, and it was all rhymed. Oh, for, did Dr. McCullough do that? Yes. Oh, for goodness sake. You oh. never went to a foundation meeting. No, yes. I Oh my gosh, Doris Bratton used to deco do the decorations for these dinners, and it was always a night. It was a thank you to the people that had given money to the foundation, and you know a way of you know. And we had one. We've had one in the last ten years here because we had one in the atrium. All of a sudden, they just stopped doing that too. A lot of the you know nice things they kind of. A lot of, a, of our meetings that were not absolutely necessary, I think, just kind of have disappeared. Yes, I don't know if it's not and people that wanting, to, <laughs> wanting to do the work of putting something like that together. I don't know, because we had them every year for a long, mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we tried our best to get Dr. McCullough to do the uh, to do an oral history, and he refused completely. Oh, yep. Well, he was a he was great. He was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, let's back up just a little bit and, and comment a little bit, talk a little bit about women in leadership. Okay. Uh, as I've, I've said, I, I have always thought that you were, you and Judy and uh, uh, were kind of the, the pioneers. Did you find anything unusual? I mean, did, uh, did anybody seem to think it was unusual for you to be leading some of these committees? I never felt that way. It just was... I felt people were relieved that somebody was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably or Nobody. thankful that I had said yes, because mm -hmm. a lot of that was a lot of time and work, and I had the time to do it because I didn't work. Mm -hmm. So really, it, it kind of then seemed that nobody had really kept women out of the leadership. Mm -hmm. They just hadn't had any women that were willing to do it. I think that could be, or maybe they hadn't been asked. Mm -hmm. they, I don't. They, I don't. They really just hadn't know. thought to ask them. I I don't know, but mm -hmm. I, I just know that I no. I never felt never. anybody was um, resentful. Mm -hmm. Of, of me, you know, they were always, you know, someone's name is escaping me. Who is that, the man that worked so well with us on stewardship that you and I went to his office that time, remember, mm -hmm. to try to get him to uh, help Hendrix. us. Hendrix, Alan yeah, Hendrix. Hendrix. Alan, Alan yes, Hendrix. Yes, 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 because he left the church as well, and he was a great stewardship mm -hmm. guy, yeah, he, yes. I'm trying to think just what it was. He did something, something that... Uh, that helped us get the blood drive going. Uh, something Remember? in particular. He had something in particular, some skill or some equipment or something that nobody else had that when we needed him to, to get everything We organized. needed him to do something, and we went over to his office, mm -hmm. you and I, I. Yes, I remember. And we talked him into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. yes. Now, he was great. I'd forgotten all about him. Yeah. I, I know it. I just... I'm still trying to... Oh, Hammond. That was the... Hammond. Uh, the name of the of the board chair before me, uh, Bill Hammond. Yes, Bill. Mm -hmm. He was the board. Bill was, and Marilyn. Bill and Marilyn. Well, Bill Hammond was board chair, and I was lay leader under him. I so see. I was kind of his mm -hmm. assistant, and then that was. Okay, so now that that answers one of my others because I was going to ask you when you when you first began to when things first began to develop to talk about. In addition to the church, yes, and I know that Bill was uh, was administrative board chair when we had the big meeting in the sanctuary to approve. The, I don't know if it was the concept of building it or if it was actually down to the plan. I think it was because I, th I think the 
discussion was, was about whether to have the atrium or not. So I guess we already, already had a plan by that time. Yes. So talk about the beginnings, uh, how, the, how you saw the idea develop that we were going to. Well, by the time that I remember being involved with it, I, it was already something, well, we talked about doing it, but then it was pretty much decided that we were going to do it. And the first meetings that I remember attending were Marion Bauman chairing, and we had made the decision to do it. Tell, I'm trying to remember, perhaps you can help me, is how did, I think we decided to do it and then we came up with the concept of the Spirit is Building. I believe that is the sequence of events. That the Spirit yeah. is Building, I think, was once we decided to, to, in we order wanted to, to be able to raise money. The, the money. And that was so successful. And I'm so proud of the church for this because we stepped out without the money and just decided to do mm -hmm. it. And it was, it, 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 we did great. Remember we had all those dinners in people's oh, houses? Yes. And oh, we, yes. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I think I, sp I don't know how many times I got up and spoke about <laughs> <laughs> well, money. I think, I, I think there was a, cons I think we had a consultant that we did? came in that was an expert on, yes, on we this did. kind of thing and, and gave hints about how to organize the. Yes, we did. We, we did have a consultant and yes, they did help us. And this is, you know, how to do it, and, and, and we followed those instructions, and, uh, but in my mind, all of this is very layered up, because it is, you know. Well, kind of, so how, what do you remember as far as basically the, the whole organization of the whole thing? You said Marion Bauman was, was chair. Chair, yes he was. Mm -hmm. Where was he basically the whole thing, and all the other committees were under? Yes, that under is what him? that's what I remember. And Lee Rogers was uh, he became the chair of the small committee that Judy Knapp and I served on, which was which was the the fan hall. So our one of our big contributions was the folding glass doors, because oh. that that was really Judy Knapp's idea. Mm -hmm. So the doors that separate it from uh -huh. the hallway. Uh -huh. The whole the glass doors that are oh. the big glass doors that are that that separate the, oh. that that we fold back. Yes, yes. To separate that right. Right. From the foyer from the foot the, the uh, Yeah, the accord, yes. Yeah. That was a, that was yeah. So mm -hmm. and then Judy and I also went around and we were we did the uh, uh, first part of the signage in the new church and we kind of did the whole church. So we went around figuring out what signs mm -hmm. needed to go where. Mm -hmm. We did and do it's that. Is yes, it? <laughs> oh, and, good. <laughs> and it's still and it's still doing well for getting people where they want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, then after I was board chair, mm -hmm. I was asked to go back and be program council chair again. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time, much to my my shock, that I found out that Phil was retiring. And so what Kathy wanted was continuity. I found out. I was just at the meeting that he was retiring so mm. and because I was program council chair again I got to be chairman of his retirement oh. party mm -hmm. well tell us about that well <laughs> it, was, it was a gala event in the in Fan Hall and um, we had we just planned it the program council was basically that were the program we were we were in charge of it so I was in charge of it oh my gosh I had a tremendous amount of help um, I'm trying Diane Bauman of course was a big help Kathy Mash uh, I don't remember Judy at that time but I'm sure she was but I know Diane I mean we worked on that scrapbook that we gave him where we all wrote something did you write something in his remember. book I don't remember that I didn't remember the Finn Hall Oh, oh, we had a big retirement dinner, mm -hmm. and we had, uh, oh, yeah, we, had, we gave him presents. I don't remember. We I may have been at that. Or something yeah. Now, we were involved in family ministries, and the big thing they had out at the, uh, in the yard out at the Rogers for the, uh, during the Green Grass Festival. Right. But, uh, but you I, would not have missed Phil Finn's retirement. I can't believe we I would have, have unless we were out there. I have a feeling that we had to have been gone because I would remember it. I would have pictures of it. And I was not. I didn't yeah. have any pictures. We must so have been I think away. We were probably gone. Uh, something that we gave him a desk lamp. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> among been, among, among know, other things. There's okay. a possibility it may have been the year that we uh, that we went to uh, Alaska. Okay. We were gone for about yeah, three have. weeks. Two weeks. Now, 
some some event though. I remember Carol well, Warner did, okay, go, coming ahead. in with with a, a plate and a, 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 some kind of a power bar. That's a, that's a retirement that. dinner. We were all up on the stage in Fan Hall. Mm -hmm. Yes, Carol she Warner, because she was his secretary. And as she came yes. in and said something about this is Phil's favorite lunch, or this is yes, what Phil yes, always yes. has for lunch, something that was like it. that. Yes, so an that apple, was, that was it. Okay, half so a we sandwich were there. or something. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I was in the hospital. I don't remember. That was, that I have was, no memory of it at all. And, and then I, Phil I, stood I, outside, and you know, and, and people went by to you know, kind of like a receiving line afterwards, mm -hmm. which was not his favorite thing. But no. But it was a really good event, and it was, it was. I, I mean, I took it really, really seriously because mm -hmm. it, like it was such an important part of this church, and yeah. we wanted to do it right. Of course, Kathy Mash was always yeah. the uh, you and Kathy Mash, uh, kind of the wind beneath oh, my no. wings. Actually, oh my. They, you know, they, it's they, true. Uh, that uh, other one was not retirement. I don't think that the one. This was your life. One that they did yeah, on that. But it was just uh, as he was retiring. It was close to it, yes. And in fact, he had not planned on coming to that uh, to the, festival, but the kids had come and they got him to come. Not, uh, yeah, but he didn't realize Debbie, what was going Debbie's on. did something in oh, the. Yeah. Um, and they did. Uh, uh, What's the son's name? Yeah. Dale. 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 Yeah, the yeah. two of them did a thing on their um, on their father and did a lot of kidding him and everything. And, uh, and Chad they, Ely was there as Abraham Lincoln. because. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was always one of Phil's favorite, favorite people, <laughs> yeah. and uh, but anyway, so yes, that's that's interesting. Uh, let me think here. Okay, back to the building program. Yes. It, we want to talk any more about the um, Palm Sunday at Lloyd Noble. Oh my gosh, there was a you know, Phil. Once again, Phil asked me to speak, and I did not. I was really, what am I going to say? And he said, "You were a good speaker. I, you know, I want you to speak." So I did. And it was that would be intimidating. It, wow, because that was a monstrous group. It was a huge gathering. But it was, um, yeah. So I did. I'm trying to think what uh, what do I want to talk about other than that? Uh, ah, the, the the little bricks where we we all donated money in people's names. Yes. Oh yes. 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 Yeah. And they're still out there. They're in the know. atrium. Tell yeah. about that. So Describe we all it. we decided to come up with uh, an I ne more. We needed more money. Trying to raise money. We we, we needed yeah. more money, and yeah. I think we sold the bricks. Wasn't it two hundred and fifty dollars a piece? I believe that's what yeah. it was. I think it may have been a minimum, or you donated whatever you wanted. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we got to, and then you got to name a brick, and mm -hmm. so we've got several out there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So describe the the plaque in the atrium for us. Well, it's just in the in the. I didn't really have anything to do with the plaque in the atrium. I, I think really Marion Bobbin was pretty much behind that. Yeah, I really didn't know in the time when I was busy trying to s encourage the sale of these how what we were going to do. I, I mm -hmm. think my idea was slightly different, but it ended up very nice mm -hmm. with well, us yeah. in the shape of the church, I believe. Yeah, he had it there in the shape yeah. of the church. They, they've actually added, added a, a, a pa panel up to the right of it, besides the, what was the, the blocks on the uh, church itself. They right. put a plant panel over the side, and that's where you know there's, they almost filled it up. They've only about, I'd say maybe 20 spots left on it. So, so we could still give more. There's still, still some if, if people still wanted to, if they could still buy a brick. Well, yeah, we we bought one uh, at, to, uh, to honor, right below the to honor yes. somebody or you know a, a yes. memorial or whatever you wanted. Absolutely. Put it, put it so that somebody comes up there. Oh, there's somebody's name, you know. I, that was a really neat, neat, unique idea. That, it was. Uh, well, I, I'm very proud of the church for, for mm -hmm. how we how we came together with that. And the Spiritus Building is such a perfect name because it really was. Uh, you know, we now, were, and go, you started to talk about the the little gatherings at people's houses. Several, yes. Talk about that concept. Of, well, we we would have a gathering. It it, it and I only went to two or three of them. Uh, I know I went to one at Doris Braddon's and one at Sandra and Carl Hook's home. Uh, we we just Phil would get up and speak, and and we would ask them to contribute money. <laughs> but I think nobody actually very made congenial. pledges until the Palm Sunday, did they? Right, but they were. We were. You know, it was just an excellent, excellent way to uh, to do it. It was. It was just. It was great. And like you said, the spirit is building. It built 
fellowship and it built uh, fellowship uh, it was yes it was and we had you know many of those dinners so i don't think anybody ever felt left out that they were not invited to mm -hmm. to something you know it was yeah it was really, such a nice yeah nice enough, way of doing enough it. going on that we everybody could feel included i think we did very very well i mean mm -hmm. I, I don't I know i have any idea of the amounts of anything but uh I, I think they certainly got off to at least the start they wanted, that they felt like they needed in order to get started. They did, right. I think it was something like four million of the six million that we needed, six, seven, six million, something. Great, like that. good. You've got that. I, yeah. I. What well, else see. would be? We've, we've talked about the finance campaign. We talked about the building. Yeah, uh, Ed and I did the finance. We were finance campaign chairman before oh, yes. the Spirit is building. Mm -hmm. I believe. Now, oh yeah, I know we were because I know our big meeting was down in what's now Meyer Hall. What, what was it? It is still right. Meyer Hall. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so talk about a finance campaign. We have to do one every year. You have to come up with a theme. Um, you have to send out. Um, we contact every single person in the church and figure out how you're going to do it. I sent out. Ed and I sent out cards that Phil had printed for us. They were like um, postcards, oh, mm -hmm. and then you could you signed your name, and everybody got. You probably don't remember getting one, but I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> Encouraging you, um, and then you, we spin, and then we would you know speak at the. At that time, we only had the one service, so mm -hmm. well one, yep. just the sanctuary and two services. So we would just speak and encourage people to be generous in their giving. Um, when we did it, we did it with Tyler and Leslie LaRue, who were our, each year you do a, like a senior co-chairs and junior co-chairs, that's how we used to do it. Yeah. And so they were our junior co-chairs and then they worked with us and then they would take over the next year. And um, it was kind of entertaining in a way. We, we would figure out how to, I know Tyler was, I, I don't know if were you oh, yeah. were you oh, there yes. when oh, Tyler, Tyler did his his oh, little yes. takeoff for Phil? Mm -hmm. Were you there? I never heard him do a takeoff on Phil. Oh yes, he but he, he was <laughs> definitely. We we recruited him for several different uh, <laughs> speaking things where he would uh, where he would use his personality and these these uh, funny things that he d did. Yes. Oh my gosh. He Tyler, is. Tyler was the uh, uh, announcer for the Green Grass Festival for Phil's uh, "This Is Your Life" thing. For Phil's. This the, is your life. When we oh, did this, this is your is life your at life. the Green Rice Festival. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the sad thing is that they was taped and the tape got somebody used the tape for, to mix a play with it and uh, so it's really messed up. Oh. It's really messed up. And that would have been classic oh, yes. because mm -hmm. he was good. Yeah, he's yeah. good. Yeah. Well he did some of that for our uh, finance campaign too, uh -huh. which was which was good. I in my my theme or our theme that year when I when I was chair was it was the sp spiritual side of giving mm -hmm. this you know it's a relationship between you and and God yeah. not why you know not giving so that this program can be so we can do this but it's it's it really is between you and God so that was and I think we've come around to that a lot in the, in the last years, and I love and I love that. Mm -hmm. I it's, think we tend to do so much more of that now. Yes, but it isn't just let's just try to give so that we can do this, this, and this, this. But let's give because it's good for you to give. It's mm -hmm. it's healthy for you to give, and it's mm -hmm. so. Do you think of anything yes. else of the of the stories of McFarland that we should mention? You know, I can't. I have been thinking about this ever since you told me that mm -hmm. you wanted to do this. I don't. I made some mm -hmm. notes. Well, look, at, look at your notes and see if we have anything else that I haven't mentioned. I, I don't know that there is. Um, I know I did. I was asked to teach a prayer, a teach a class on prayer, which I did. I did do that, and I went around teaching people how I pray mm -hmm. uh, in different Sunday school classes. And I mentioned that when I spoke at Lloyd Noble, because one of the things that uh, was very apparent was we didn't have any room in this church for any additional uh, 
a classroom. Kind of and we had to meet up in the balcony. Mm -hmm. And we had like 25 people up there crowded in the balcony for the prayer group. So I used mm -hmm. that in my speech. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think, what else? Uh, you know, all this is quite a turnaround for someone, as you described yourself at the very beginning, as growing up as a non-practicing Christian. It was, but you see, I, I, you know, I had a lot of uh, time to make up for a lot of wasted years. You know that, like I told you at the very beginning, the years the locust have eaten. I believe that is Hosea. I say that again. I'm Hosea, the quote from Hosea, oh, uh -huh. I will restore the years the locusts have eaten. Okay. That is a, a quote uh -huh. from the Old Testament. Oh. And I just felt like God was going to do that, but I needed to be cooperative too uh -huh. wow. and restore those years that I had put busy doing nothing. <clears throat> um, I, we did do something really interesting, and, and you were probably involved in this too. Remember those years that, and this was a Kathy Mash thing, that middle adult ministry? Yes. You remember that? Yes, talk about that. That was so fun. We, mm -hmm. we came up, it was Kathy's idea, we came up with this idea that we would have a special ministry and activities for people between the ages of 50 and 70. Mm -hmm. We would be too old for that now. <laughs> However, we, we, we did do it, and um, uh, Jerry LaFoon yes. was chairman of it. Mm -hmm. And we, we had several meetings. The problem was we couldn't come up with anything. All of us had other groups that we were involved with, other places of service. And we had a terrible time, as I remember, trying to figure out some uh, altruistic reason for us. <laughs> we, we, we tried to come up with a few things. I know we had people came and spoke to us. That person came and spoke about uh, the high school students without homes. Oh, uh, talking uh, about uh, it's now bridges at that yes, time. Yes, and um, we and we kind of we, we uh, thought about doing I something. I think what the name we, of it was before. I know. I remember that, but but it, it kind of fizzled Ilsey. out after a while because what it turned out to be was just a social. We had dinners. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you do yeah, remember and, and that? And I do believe I believe that that was the group that went to Branson. It was. <laughs> I had a trip to Branson. Why, why wasn't I there? <laughs> I didn't go. Well, yeah. part of the problem um, was scheduling. Gary Anderson drove the bus, and Beverly kind of oh. was the hostess on the bus. Okay. And Kathy, of course, was the organizer. Yes, of course. Yeah, Kathy Mash. Oh, my gosh. She has been a wonder. Oh, for sure. That yeah. she, she's that's another one. That's another one we haven't been able to interview. Yeah, we're, we're, we're being sneaky. We're, we're, uh, we're currently uh, meeting to uh, plan the 100th anniversary, not plan it, but the, to work towards it. And uh, it's called an ad hoc committee. And uh, she's meeting with us, and I've got the camera set up in front, so everything's being said. You know, it's going into the... Into the <laughs> I won't tell her. <laughs> no, don't tell her. Uh, <laughs> This is fascinating. Do you think of anything else? I have with well, all I know kinds of things that I didn't have on my list. <laughs> well, I know that you wanted me to say something about what would I say to a new uh, person coming to McFarland? Didn't you have that uh, on Yes, your... let me make sure that I have. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now, I like this question, though. Okay. What would you call the most significant thing that has happened in McFarland and in Methodism during your association? Jesus. That, well, the, actually, the, the, as, as Methodism has developed, Jesus has obviously entered I, into... I think the most thing that I... Is, is the, what I remember from my early days of coming to what's, what is now is that we, uh, at this church, I don't know about Methodism, because uh, I only... I don't, only only go here, although I know about St. Luke's too, is that Jesus is held up. He's mentioned. Is It's not God, and it's not Christ. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus. I, that's what I would say, is that we are, we have become much more, in my years here, much more um, straightforward about that one that we call God, that it is Jesus, or Name not more. the generic God. Mm -hmm. 
You know, one of the things that we had uh, when I first we first came in to uh, retire and start the church here, <coughs> or come to church here, was that uh, I would wind up on the finance committee. At that time, they were wanting to, to only do what we could afford to do, not borrow any money or anything like this. And the, we convinced, uh, some of us on the finance committee convinced them that we need to step out on faith. Yes. Trust Jesus, our God, yes. to do so. This is where that the idea came of uh, uh, selling bonds to our own congregation, and we I think we what we raised ninety thousand dollars or something like that, enough to repair the the damage in the, the sanctuary and all the other stuff that we were trying to do to get started. And the interesting thing was that when we paid that, we didn't really wind up paying much of that ninety thousand dollars back. Because a lot of people, once the, the bonds come due, they just donate in the church. Of course, mm -hmm. just donate yeah. the church, and and, and they were yeah. most people that were getting the, the what do you call it, the uh, uh, interest, were just writing it, you know, signing yes. it and turning the church. And so that money that we got didn't cost us a dime, not really. That is a wonderful story. Yeah. That's so. So you feel like the important thing is our our new openness about about uh, spiritual life and dependence on Jesus. Dependence on Jesus, the fact that we have so many small groups, mm -hmm. very much like John Wesley wanted. And you see it, the church is just booming with life. Small groups meeting, uh, growth together, groups of 10 and 12, and not just great big classes where somebody gets up and gives a program. Uh, you, you know, it's, these are really intentional groups uh, wanting to meet, wanting to grow. And we've got Bible studies, devotional book studies all over the church. This, this is not, this is, has not always been that way. It used to be you joined the church. When I joined the church, I remember being told that, uh, give, being, being given a recommendation about what Sunday school class I, I should join. And that was the searchers. I did not. I went to adult Bible. But, mm -hmm. uh, there weren't that many classes either. It was kind right. of sw slotted in by That's, your age. That was Kathy that started, and the <laughs> first thing she started doing was starting classes, and yeah. she continued all she, the time. She, she, had, she was doing it with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and mm -hmm. it, this, right. So this, to me, I just think the opportunities for spiritual growth and a relationship with Jesus, getting to know who he is, He's just not, it's just not somebody that we read about and we, and not a set of rules, but an actual living presence that we can have a relationship with, that we are offering this now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I, so. I like that. Okay, and you, you started to say that I had asked in here about if you, when you see young people coming into the church, what advice would you give them? Join a small group. Join a small group, yes. Get involved join a small group because it's too big a church to try to find your way, uh, you know, find something to, and, and, and be willing to work. I mean, be willing to join a committee. I would say that the sad thing that I see at the church that I, that I, the thing I, I'm not happy about is that we don't have the communication that we used to have with the church newspaper and we don't, a lot of us, and new people really don't know they what's know. going on, and they don't know how to get involved. Right. So I, I think that that's a lot of people that we have interviewed have commented that it's hard to keep up, yes. hard to really get the feeling of the whole. Yes. Of the whole group. The only way you can do it now. I was so much easier when when we joined because we had the big church newspaper, mm -hmm. and we could and we we could read it and we could figure out mm, I could be on that committee or oh that's some place I could go. Really, I don't. Um, I don't know how anybody unless those pamphlets. Well, the, the, mm -hmm. they've got the weekly pamphlets, but also they have the once a month, I guess it is, uh, uh, minister's luncheon. But then they get the people there that have joined the church during that time or just visiting. It's mm -hmm. difficult. And right. I think that's the thing we do. It, that uh, I'm not sure, I, I, you know, how good we're doing a job on that. Where they're actually, I know that they used to have at those luncheons. They would have, uh, we had a representative of the United Methodist men there and the other things. I don't think we do anymore. I don't, you know, it's not mm -hmm. that we're invited to. 
haven't right. heard recently. I don't know. Uh, that I, I guess they're still having them because yeah, they, they still to talk them. about they, it. They're I announced, but uh, whether they actually uh, have any other people show up to, to right. invite them to come to this or that or small group or anything, you know, I don't know. But that's, to me, that that's a that's an area of where we could improve, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to, because it's one thing to be hospitable and to smile, and I agree, all that's important. Wear your name tag, smile. I, I'm a big one at smiling at people. I think that's real important. However, when they go home, <laughs> they need more than a smile. They, they need to, you know, and I don't know if the calling and, and I, I, don't, I don't know, I just think it'd be, we just need to get them involved in, in something where they mm -hmm. can have an identity and feel like they're contributing and they, Give them something to do. Now, there was some kind of a meeting, I think it was within, within the past year, where exactly that was, was uh, being discussed. I don't know if you, you might have been there and you might not. I wasn't. It was no. uh, something about so many people that come into the church wind up just drifting back out through the back door right. because they don't get involved. They don't in find that, that connection. Well, I think what you need to do is actually contact somebody that's on the vision committee that they're working on right now. Oh, she's in my Sunday school class, Missy this Louie. Yeah, I yeah. see that they that they actually bring up something about this the, on that small the small group thing, get it people involved in that small group. It's just how to how to do it. How the best way to do it mm -hmm. is really personal invitation is the real Personal invitation, one. personal and, and <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well remember we did that for a while. Now, you know, the more I talk, the more I remember. So you need to tell me when t my time is up. Because I time you have no time on it. I guess I, I <laughs> do. When we run out of things up to talk about, hours. that's when it's up. up to four hours. Oh, no. I don't think Suzanne wants to sit here that long. Um, don't you remember there was something where we were where we were given a name of a new person, and we were supposed to, I don't know what that was called, but we went through that too, where we had we're supposed to call that person. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I. I I, I just feel like that. So my advice to a, a new person coming to this church would be to definitely to, um, well, introduce yourself to Linda too. Introduce, yes. you go up and introduce yourself. But she's fabulous. And, um, you know, I'm just amazed at how well our ministers do at remembering people. Yes. When I think of how many people there are in this church, and yet, the yes. second time I meet uh, Linda, the second time I met Sh yeah. Shiloh, the second time yeah. I met Tino, they were all remembering my name. Yeah. It just uh, is it's hard to believe. Yeah. Just, Good uh, thing they didn't depend on me. They what? Good thing they didn't depend on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people have that gift of names. You know, I'm kind of in the middle. My husband, Ed, was terrible at it. And, you know, he knew it. I so, got blanks on people I've known for 20 years. Yeah. I, I've never been 100% good. I mean, like t t today, it took me a while to remember Bill Hammond's name. Yeah. I mean, and I knew, I mean, I worked with him for, for years, and I, but, um, so that's, I mean, I think our, I mean, I'm very, I'm so proud of our church and so happy with the way it is going. I think we have a, boy, right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we've probably covered this, this last thought as we've talked about the other things, but you may want to add a little bit more. What are your hopes and prayers for McFarland in the coming years? That we continue doing what we're doing and that we continue to change, you know, lives that change the world. I think that's wonderful. Um, Isn't that a wonderful mission statement? It is. And I, my mission statement that Dick House and, and I, oh, and what was that associate minister, Trevor? What? Yeah. I can't remember his name. No, Trevor, not Trevor. No, no not Trevor. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. he was a, was a quarterback. I can't remember his last name. <laughs> Young fella. Yes. He, anyway, they came over to my house one day, and we came up with the mission statement. Really? Responding to God's call, that one. That I was didn't ours. Know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it got replaced. And now, I'm these delighted. These are things that people never actually, know. Actually, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure, but I think it may have been replaced before. We came up with this last, last one. Uh, because, is that the whole responding to God's call? Was we, there more to it than that? It uh, was responding to God's. No, oh, I see now. I can't even remember it. That's probably why it's been replaced. Uh, responding. Think, it was written all over everything. Uh -huh. Re responding to God's. Yeah, I think there was one call. other one that was in between that one and the one we currently have now. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't know, Joe. I'm not sure. But it was written on all the bulletins. It's got to be in the archives. Okay. <laughs> so we look. We look back to some of the bulletins while while Dick House was. Yes. Oh yeah. It'll be on there. Dick oh, absolutely. We have it'll to look it'll, back it'll, up. It'll we, be. We have on. copies of all the bulletins. It'll be on there. Mm -hmm. But I love this. Uh, I love this one. It's short. It's easy. It's easy to remember. The other one was a little longer, but basically very much the same. Mm -hmm. Responding to God's call, we seek to make, uh, I like, disciples for Christ. It was something mm -hmm. like yeah, that. that it good. was something like that. But make this one, disciples for Christ. yeah, this is so much easier to remember, yeah. changing lives that change the world, and I just hope that we can continue to do that. And, but, but to me, that's through Bible study, mm -hmm. and that's where the, the connection is going to be made, where lives are going to get changed because they're going to be transformed. And, and then that's when you're going to get the growth. Wonderful. You know, one of the things I remember uh, Phil talking about, he'd been on a mission trip, I believe, and encountered people that had said, oh, you're from McFarland. Oh, I didn't like you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bit, I mean, it's, we have a mission too. I mean, when I look at what they've done at St. Luke's, yeah. it's, uh, we, we, we can do that. We can do that too, mm -hmm. if we want to. I don't know where they we go went. ahead and tell us what they've done at St. Luke's. Well, they've they've uh, established a satellite church now in Edmond. In Edmond, I saw where they had just opened that. Yes, and that church is booming. I go up there for another really? group uh -huh. that I that I belong to, and um, so I didn't tell you about all the other groups I belong to. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I, I'm just realizing yeah. that but, this is another good lead-in <laughs> right there to, to telling us about what what it is you're doing today. I know you're still working with a Sunday school class. I still work with a Sunday school class, but I, I'm a I'm a board member of a group, uh, a town hall group, and we bring speakers in uh, nationally and internationally known speakers, and we meet at St. Luke's. That's you how bring come them I bring to 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 speak. We we to where. To the church, but it's not a church group. It's a, it's a start, it's, it was started by the Junior League. I it's see. called the uh -huh. Town Hall of Oklahoma City. Uh -huh. And we have six uh, speakers every year. And um, we just uh, and we have a membership of about 1,200 people. And that St. Luke's is filled with our members. So is that, are they, do they usually speak at St. Luke's? Or? They always speak at St. Luke's. Okay. And then we have lunch there afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you know that McFarland it doesn't have a satellite church, although they're talking about one, but we're responsible for two churches that are one of the. The, uh, the Indian. Uh, well, oh. actually, I guess well, we we're involved in, in, in that one, but but actually we provided the, the people that, that started the congregation. Yes, 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 I know, I remember. Yeah, for, they, and, uh, actually, they did for St. Stephen's and then more recently for Bridgeview. Yes, Bridgeview some. is what I'm remembering yeah. because yeah. one of the members, couples in my Sunday school class, went oh, yeah. to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did yes. they come back? Yeah. No, no. They haven't come no, back? No, they did not. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Crutchfield, uh, Tom Love, and a couple of other couples in the church in McFarland were told to go to and start the, uh, you know, uh, St. Stephen's. Yeah. And they, in fact, uh, Tom Love was the one that greeted us. We uh, went there when uh, I was going overseas, and uh, she was going to be, what, four blocks from it? Something like Something that. Something like that. And mm -hmm. so they went to that church rather than McFarland while I was gone. And then uh, they did the same thing with, with uh, the Bridgeview, which they... Okay. That's why, that's why I asked if they came back. Yeah. Tom always joked that when his wife, when they put in new carpeting, his wife was allergic to the new carpeting, so that's when they came back to McFarland. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, wow, so, uh, you, okay, anything else in particular that you, of your current uh, activities? Uh, that, that's fascinating. I, I, I knew, didn't have any idea that uh, anything like that existed. Oh, and if you should come, you, yes. you guys would love it. You are, I will bring you, on Sunday, yeah. I'll bring you a, uh, a write-up on it. Yeah. Please rem rem remind me to do that. You would, lots of people from McFarland go. It's really, really mm -hmm. good. And we have lunch afterwards in the, that's how I know what's going on at St. Luke's. Mm -hmm. They're know, a huge weekdays. building. They're redoing their balcony now. And mm -hmm. On weekdays, so they. It's Thursday mornings at 1030 at St. Luke's. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, so that's what I'm currently, that's my, my current mm -hmm. other thing. Mm -hmm. I belong to a lot of other Yes, groups, I know it was, it was so so hard to, to get you scheduled for an interview. I remember we had to go about, about <laughs> a month, at least a month far, far out to get some find a date that we could do this. Yeah, I, so, I am busy. 
<laughs> so you think of anything else we should talk about? I can't. I mean, I know the minute I walk out of here, I'm going to be regret sure. that I didn't say something. But mm -hmm. I do want to say that I mean, I mean, Phil Fan and and Kathy Mash really were were the two people who oh, yeah. definitely gave me the let me say gave me the opportunity to serve and then helped me. Mm -hmm. And you were also a great help. <laughs> you were always somebody uh, I could count on. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. Thank you for saying that. Well, I think, that's I think true. You're being, being very generous. <laughs> oh, the new member luncheons. Remember yes, the new we member luncheons. That? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't do. Do we do that about anymore? once a month? Every once three every months, uh, something once like every that. three or four months. We that, have, that's where I first got Tyler. He, we had him come and do a talk <laughs> uh, to our, one of our new member luncheons, and he—I don't remember what he talked about, but he was so entertaining. He just. Uh, oh, he's he's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had yeah. we had lots of good activities. There. Yeah, we did. I remember some of those luncheons. It all it just Stephen Ministry. That was another thing. Oh, I was were involved you, you were with. I am minister. a Stephen. I was an original Stephen minister, and I served for probably six or seven years as a mm -hmm. Stephen minister. And did you carry on in when when they went into the congregational care ministers? Did no, you? I had retired from Stephen ministry okay, before that happened. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had. Joe, I see you up there. Are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for y'all to decide your throat. Yeah. I'll so uh, I've just uh, anything else you think of that, that we've missed? If you can't, if you, I, I, I don't remember anything else, and I've, I have covered everything okay. I had on here. Okay. So I well, guess I guess if we think great. of something else, we'll just have to write, write just, a little addendum and, and um, just I'm just thank you so much for uh, for letting me you know share because oh, and, McFarland love, love needs having you share. a great I've deal to me. Of, I've learned all kinds of new things, and uh, it's just uh, really been enlightening. But what a great thing you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh